X-ray crystallography is one of the most widely used and powerful techniques available to chemists, so it would be rather useful for you to understand the fundamentals of this technique. So, what can it do? Well, it can tell you almost everything you want to know about your material. Its bond lengths and angles, torsion angles, non-bonded distances, and often what type of atom you're looking at. I say looking at, obviously you aren't actually, these are x-rays after all, and even if you could see them, it would be inadvisable to have a peek. And how might you do this? And why x-rays anyway? Well, unfortunately for us, atoms are too small to interact with visible light, so we simply can't use powerful optical microscopes to have a look. We can, however, use x-rays to determine the structure, but unlike with visible light, we can't focus x-rays using a lens. However, x-rays do still scatter in a unique pattern which can be recombined mathematically, and although painstakingly complex, nowadays they can be recombined computationally, making life a lot easier. There are other challenges. X-rays tend to pass straight through materials, so you need to be firing a lot of X-rays at a large group of molecules, and all these molecules need to be in a regular orientation with respect to each other, namely a crystal. Otherwise, X-rays would be scattered in all directions. This is all well and good, but now to the crux of the matter. Why do they scatter? And what does the scattering pattern tell us about the crystal? Well, the scattering is actually caused by the electrons in the molecule, rather than the nuclei. And the scattering pattern produced is somewhat similar to a 3D representation of the famous Young slit experiment, with spots appearing in a regular spherical array around the crystal. Slices of this sphere of reflection data will be taken, and if necessary, the whole sphere of data is taken. The distances between these spots reveals how far apart individual atoms are from one another, and the systematic absences of spots gives insight into what type of unit cell you're looking at. This is detailed in John Charman's online course on X-ray diffraction. And yes, I couldn't draw John Charman. Anyway, what you're actually creating is a time average electron density map of your molecule. High concentration areas correspond to atomic positions, and the actual electron density to the types of atoms themselves. 